بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم We have covered five of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, As-Salam The one that comes next to As-Salam in this hadith of Sunan Al-Tirmizi that we are following here is Al-Mu'min As we talked about As-Salam, that Salam refers to safety, that the provider of every safety in this life and the hereafter is As-Salam subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are two more names that are similar to it that are coming next now, Al-Mu'min and Al-Muhaymin, with little differences. Al-Mu'min means the giver and the provider of peace. A person may be safe, but doesn't have no peace of mind. With all the security systems that we have developed, we can get safety, but we may not be able to get the peace of mind through those. There may be cases and times when a person is not afraid of anything, but the peace of mind is not there. You may be living in a beautiful garden where you are not afraid of anyone attacking you. You have every beauty around you. You have whatever you need. But something is disturbing you. The peace of mind is not there. The only provider of that peace is Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word mu'min, to understand it and to remember it, is driven from the word aman. And aman means peace. As we are looking into the meaning of the word, we should at the same time understand when we call each other or ourselves that we are mu'mineen. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. And the translation is, O oh, you who believe. Now, where does this translation come from? We are translating Iman as belief. But here we are saying the word Aman, Alif, Mim, Nun, Aman means peace. It's the same root word, whether it's for, we use it for Aman in the meaning of peace, or we use it for the meaning of belief. Because Iman means to confirm someone's statement. This is Iman. That you believe in it, which means you have confirmed what this person has said. We confirm everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Simply means we believe in all of that. Whatever Allah says, if it comes from Allah, yes, I witness for it. I confirm that. I attest that, I agree with it, I accept that. And whenever you have that Iman, which means you 
are attesting to someone's statement and that person knows that no matter what this person is going to say, there will be no rejection from your side. So that person is having the peace of getting rejected from your side. This is why Iman is called Iman. Which means, the person is having a safety from our side of being rejected. So Iman in Allah simply means that we are providing that guarantee that whatever comes from Allah will never be rejected by me. So it's a safety in that direction that there can be no rejection from this side. So in reality, Iman does not mean belief. Iman means safety. Iman means peace in Arabic language. And although now in the language itself, the word Iman is used for confirming something, and that is because there is now peace of mind on the other side that that person would not be rejected. So when we say that we have Iman in Allah, we have Iman in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever any person at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went and confirmed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I have Iman in you, simply means he is saying to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you can have full peace of mind from my side of being rejected from me. I would never reject you. Whatever you would say, you would never be rejected by me. So, now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to have a peace of mind from this person's side of being rejected by this person. This is why Trusting someone and believing in someone is called Iman. So the main thing is peace. And because trusting someone, confirming someone's statement brings peace, this is why Iman or trust and belief is called also Iman in Arabic language. Whatever peace we have in this world is of course from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Mu'min, this name of Allah is used in Quran once, in Surah Al-Hashr. When we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Mu'min, what does it mean? It refers to both of these meanings. Al-Mu'min means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms his own oneness, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu, Allah witnesses that there is no God but him. So it refers to that meaning of confirming it. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms that the believer will be saved from all type of hardships in the akhirah. This is also confirming something. And a person who confirms something, we call him mu'min. Also, Rasul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms the prophethood of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam by showing miracles on their hands. So this is another confirmation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which, for which we use the word mu'min. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider of peace. And aman means peace. This is why Allah is called mu'min. So it's for both the reasons, for confirming these things that we have just listed, and for bringing the peace to the world and bringing the peace to every person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Al-Mu'min. In reality, if we look at our nature, how many times different thoughts keep on coming to our mind? Such thoughts that they are enough to just destroy ourselves if we start reacting to those. We can really do a lot of harm to our souls. It's only Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala that is saving us from all of that and providing us with all kind of peace. Otherwise, forget about others being in peace from our side. We ourselves may not be in peace from our side. We will end up hurting ourselves so much 
that we don't need others to do anything wrong to us. We are enough to do harm ourselves and not to talk about when it comes to harming others. Within the human body, there are so many different parts and opponents that are just totally opposite of each other. Our creation, the chemicals within the body, they are such that if they, if they, if they start getting mixed, they will be enough to destroy us. This is Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala who provided such a system that is keeping all of these type of chemicals from mixing with each other and destroying a human body. This world by itself is full of things that are enough to bring all kind of mischief in the world. All kind of destruction in the world. In fact, Human beings many times are very proud of their technologies. And very proudly, <coughs> some people may say that we have developed such weapons that they can destroy this whole world five times. If there were five universes like this, we alone have so much of weapons that it can destroy all of these five universes. Five worlds at the same time. And then there are some other countries who may have similar type of claims. We developed all of this. The only one that is protecting us is Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who's keeping us safe and keeping us, um, uh, allowing us to have that peace of mind. Otherwise, if he would just give these people the guts to use what they have, it's only having those guts to use it, they would really not hesitate using these things to destroy the whole world. We have enough thieves, robbers, that are willing to do anything to get what they like to get. If a person would just start thinking about these people around him in his own town, will not be having any peace of mind. It's only Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala that is giving us so much peace that in spite of all of these elements being around us and being in the same world where we live in, still Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us that peace of mind. If lions today would know how much we are afraid of them, they would not limit themselves to jungles. They'll come to us. If all of these snakes and scorpions will know what they can do, and believe me, these are the things that many times we use the names and then sometimes it comes to our mind, yeah, even if they come, you know, we have so many different things that we can kill them through it. If they would start coming to us, there is no way they can, we can, that we can run away from them. I remember only some time ago, <coughs> traveling during the night time on a highway, where every some time I had to stop. I couldn't travel, I couldn't continue my journey anymore. The reason is, I can't see nothing. What happened? The weather is clean, is clear, no clouds, no fog, no rain. But there are so many bugs out there that are just running to the light of the car and getting onto the windshield. After every some time, the windshield is so dirty that you can't see no more. Your wipers, the use of the wiper is just making it worse. So you have to stop. Use the force of your arm to clean the windshield. And then you are able to see something. These bugs, what do they work? And if we, when we look at them in a normal way, oh, okay, there are so many bugs, but of course they do nothing to me. With the best car you can buy in the world, they would stop you. 
These are, these are these small bugs, which normally, to our understanding, they are totally harmless. But they would stop you. Imagine if those things will come up that we think that they are harmful, and we consider them harmful. If these rats will start getting into the houses, try to fight them. And so many things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Subhanallah, if these things will just start getting there, and if we would have to fight each and every one of these, there will be no way that we would ever have any peace of mind. <coughs> It's only Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala that is protecting us from all of those and giving us so much peace of mind. And not only today. There were times when people lived in houses full of Scorpios. Ask if you have seen your great-grandfathers or great-grandparents, ask them. They may have seen those situations and, truly speaking, I am one of those examples. When we used to live in Medina Munawwara, I know that every time when the house is empty, when you leave home and you come back, the first thing you know as soon as you open the door, there will be about 10-15 Scorpios welcoming you at the steps. As they see no movement in the house, then they come out. And first thing you have to do is kill five, ten of them, and then you will be able to step into your house. And this is, we are talking about 20, 30 years ago. Imagine what would have been the situation before that. And people living in those houses. Hardly you can remember incidents where people were hurt by those. I think they were less harmful than our cars. There are more people dying by their car accidents than people dying by those in those days. So when we talk of safety, we think that it may be that it's only us now we are safe. Now we have that peace of mind. And our parents tell us that when we were children, they tell us that we were living in houses where we as infants, we as children are sleeping and there are snakes during the night time walking by us. And they see it. They see this car, the snake is walking by us, but they won't say nothing and the snake won't do nothing. He's just going on his own way. What is this? Besides knowing that there is Al Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala who made those animals react in that way. Otherwise, if they get violent, subhanAllah, that's it for us. So each and every thing in our life is showing us that there is someone who's giving us that peace of mind. Sometime you see a person driving a nice car with the air conditioning on, but the person is sweating bad. What happened? He has all the means of comfort, but He's going to an appointment, he's going to somewhere where he knows he may be facing some hardship. He's in a difficult situation at this time. He's sweating as he's going that, time, that direction. With the best ride, with the EC on, with whatever he wants, he has cold drink around him, but he's sweating back. Another person doesn't have AC in his car, so he has to roll his windows down. But he is not sweating. The provider of the peace is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can buy means of peace. We can never buy the peace. People, I mean, wallahu alam, uh, I heard this from someone, a non-Muslim, entering into one of the masajid, and I heard it that it's, it happened in New York City. Only a few days ago, a few days ago someone was telling me this. A person in the city went into a masjid, non-Muslim. Someone took him to the masjid, and it was night time, 
So you see some people sleeping on the floor of the masjid and they're snoring. So he asked his friend, did these people eat any medicine, any special type of tablet that these people use that, look, they're sleeping on the floor. I mean, something that many people really, I mean, people who are out of our system, they would have never imagined being sleeping in the floor of, not even in the house, and here they are in the masjid. Outside of their house, they're laying on the floor of the masjid and they're all sleeping, and it's not one or two, it's a large group of people that are sleeping there. So he asked, what makes them have that peace that they just go to sleep? Wherever they are, they lay down, they go to sleep. So he was told, as they started telling him about, about Deen, about Iman, he was told that the pills that they have taken is the pill of the Shahada. It's this kalima that these people have recited has given them the peace of mind that they are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are out here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the doors are open, they are in the middle of the city, they are not afraid of anything, alhamdulillah, take the blanket, just go to sleep. And this thing, seeing those people sleeping in the masjid, and with that peace of mind, led that person to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ The peace of mind comes from the remembrance of Allah. This is the thing that provides people the peace of mind. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Once during one of his journeys, he laid down under a tree. And other sahaba radwan Allah and Ibrahim, they got scattered in different parts. They're in the middle of the desert, so they never thought anything could happen over here. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he hanged his uh, sword on a tree, and he's laying under the shadow of the tree. Sahaba Rizwan Allah they explained that normally we used to leave good place for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that he will have some shed and uh, he will have some rest. So a kafir comes there, he's passing by that place. You see Sahaba Ridwanullah are resting and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is also having a nap. So he quietly goes there by the tree where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is sleeping and he picks up the sword of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now he calls, he knows that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is under his control now. He has no weapons, no shield, nothing to protect himself, and he's laying down. And this person is standing on his head with a sword in his hand. And he calls on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, مَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ يَا Muhammad, Muhammad, who will save you from me? Look at the peace of mind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in that situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with no hesitations without having to beg this person oh please you know I'm alone now oh, please let me go people are there Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's response right away was Allah the way he said Allah who could say it that way with that effect in that name that Kafir himself says and the other Sahaba who saw the situation, they woke up right away. And they saw the whole situation as they woke up, they saw this person standing there. Because when he called Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they woke up too. As soon as he said Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said Allah, he said it in such a way that that kafir started shaking. And the sword fell off his hand. This is how much he was shaking. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa picked the sword up and he asked him now the same question. Now who will save you from me? A person who runs away from Allah can never take the name of his idols at that time. Look at the hadith. The person didn't say, Allah, al Uzza, my idol will save me now. He knows they won't. 
So he says, Kun khayra akhaz, be a good person now. Be nice. See the difference between a person who has that iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and between the one who has no iman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam response is Allah. That person could have said the same thing, but of course it won't mean anything for him. He has no connection established there. This is where we get our peace of mind. In the worst situation, the most difficult situation you can imagine a human being can go through. You see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam having so much peace of mind. What was that besides having that connection with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala? This shows us what would this name do for us. When we establish our self, our connections, uh, uh, this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Al-Mu'min, the provider of peace. Then, at the worst situations in person's life, the person will remember my connection, regardless of what this person did to me, what that person did to me, what anyone wants to do to me. Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in the cave of Thawr. With Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. Finally a situation came when Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whispering to him, Ya Rasulullah, look at Abu Jahl. If he would look down towards his feet, he is going to see us. He's just standing out here, Ya Rasulullah. And then the next moment, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Jahl is looking at us. Is not now he will see us. He is looking at us, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Abu Bakr, didn't you hear Allah saying, وَتَرَاهُمْ يَنظُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ وَهُمْ لَا يُصِرُونَ you will see them looking at you, but they won't be able to see. He's looking, but he can't see. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is still worried. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, لا تحزن إن الله معنا Don't grieve, Allah is with us. This is the connection with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much peace. The more connection we have with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala using this attribute of Allah. And whenever we name this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we keep this, name, this meaning in our mind, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider of peace. My connection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now regardless of what the world would like to do to me, my connection is with, with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as that connection is there, who can take that peace of mind away from this person? Because there is no other mu'min besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we use some type of security systems and try to save each other, protect each other, help each other. But when it comes to real peace of mind, how many times we see ourselves in a situation where so many people would try to help you with it? Don't worry, you know, everything should be okay. The parents are saying the same thing. Children may be saying the same thing. Spouses coming to us, you know, don't worry, I'm with you. But the person is not getting satisfied. What would satisfy this person's mind in those type of situations when the person is totally disturbed? It's his connection and her connection with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we really have this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have the best treatment to depression. Depression is just because the person is disturbed. No peace. So when that person has this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the person is not depressed anymore. And again I will use the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imagine when he was in Makkah Mukarrama. Day and night, he's surrounded by those who are throwing thorns on his ways, 
who are plotting and planning to hurt him, it goes beyond that and he knows that every day there are plans to kill him. And was, as soon as he walks out of his home, there are people to always mock him, to curse at him, to use abusive language against him. None of this happens to us. But still we are afraid to show through our appearance that we are Muslims because we are afraid people will laugh at us. We are not afraid someone will attack us. We are not afraid someone would come on my face and stand in front of me. Hardly that fear will be there. Normally, yeah, someone will laugh at us. And just because of that, we are disturbed. Here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is in a situation where day and night, people are plotting to kill him. He walks out of his home. He goes by the Kaaba. He is doing salat over there where all the leaders of Quraysh are sitting there. That was the place where they would get together. All the leaders of Quraysh are sitting there. He goes over there. They are watching, they are looking. And just by the Kaaba where they are sitting, he goes, Allahu Akbar, and starts doing his salah. What gives him that peace of mind? And he knows he have gone through the situation where Abu Jahl have said to people, today I will pick up a rock and would smash his head when he would go to sujood. He knows that this is what he have said. And still he would do the salah there and he will make the sujood in front of the same group of people. And it's not that in his sujood he's looking well. The dog, dog is barking, let me just make sure that the dog won't jump on me. No, it's not that. With all that peace of mind, he is in his situation. Initially, Abu Jahl was not able to take that step. He did not have the guts to take the step to walk towards Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And finally, when he came one day, he said he just did it. He picked up a rock. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi went into sujood, he started walking that direction and in no time people saw Abu Jahl running away. And the rest of the leaders of Quraysh, they are now laughing at their own leader. They are laughing at Abu Jahl, why are you running away? There is nothing there, there was no one there to run after you. Finally, when he got to them, he says that I saw something like a lion there that was about to jump on me. What was all of this? Whether there was a lion there or not, whether he was able, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him, showed him something in his vision, whatever that was, the main thing is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's connection with al-mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. You keep on looking throughout the Seer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is full of this. And then you go beyond that. The life of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and then the life of Tabi'een and the scholars of Islam with all the hardships and difficulties. Still, they never lost that peace of mind. Yes, disturbance was there. Nothing compared in, com, uh, com, uh, no iman, no one's iman can be like the iman of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But still, in spite of that disturbance, that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always there, they never lost that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. And He is the one who is going to protect us. And even if they do whatever they want, in many cases they did what they wanted to do, even if they do whatever they want, I'm still okay with it. I'm still fine. So, this is the peace. You know, this, this is what really the peace of mind means. That although the hardship is afflicting the person, the person is going to be in that situation, but that peace of mind is there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, that he says, he did not mention his name. He said there was a prophet, but of course it refers to himself. That there was a prophet who was wiping the blood of his face and he's making dua for the people who did that to him. 
And he was saying, Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Ya Allah, forgive my people that did it just because they don't know it. Look at the peace of mind he has at that time when he's wiping the blood of his face. I mean, at least for that moment, the person will be disturbed. Will get out of control. Will lose every trust in his life and will start complaining, Ya Allah, look what's happening to me. But no. He's still having that peace of mind. So regardless of the physical situation, physical situation could be anything. People went through a lot of hardships. Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam is known for the difficulties and hardships he went through. But they never lost their connection with al mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore always that peace of mind was there. So this is what our connection with al mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala would do for us. Every peace of mind that is there is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are really looking for peace of mind, you can never buy it in any store in this world. No store in this world will sell that peace of mind. They sell good and very expensive, very comfortable beddings. They sell nice mattresses. They sell nice couches. They will sell all kind of these things, but these things will never provide, provide us with peace of mind. And in reality, most of the time, when we buy these type of things, many times we are looking for some comfort in these things, but many times people are looking for some peace of mind. And this is why, those who don't have Iman, when they get tired of using everything else and nothing is giving no peace of mind, then they want to lose their mind. And this is why they drink alcohol. They want to get drunk. What is all of this for? Just forget about everything in this world. Those moments of the life are so beautiful when I don't remember nothing. He doesn't remember his mother, he doesn't remember his wife, he doesn't remember his children, he doesn't remember no one in the world. He just wants to get drunk and be out of this world. What is all of this is for? Why do they feel good about it? Only moments of peace that he feels he's getting at that time. But in reality, maybe some of the most dangerous moments of his life. And people do things strange in that at that time. Great people, which means from the worldly point of view, they were caught driving while intoxicated. And there are so many signs saying, don't drink and drive. But of course that person can't read that sign at this time. The time he read it, he never thought he would do it. But when he went and he did it and he was drunk, he didn't know if he was driving a car, he didn't know if he was dealing with his mother or he was dealing with his wife or with his daughter. But he did it because he just wanted to forget about everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will tell you something where you remember everything. And you will have a peace of mind, such a peace of mind that will be everlasting with you forever. And at the same time, instead of being those moments, uh, being the most dangerous moments of your life, for you those will be the most beautiful and most peaceful moments of your life. Remember the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, therefore, whenever he had a hardship or difficulty, what was he doing? And what did he teach Sahaba Ridwan Allah to do? And what did he teach us to do? He says, go perform two raka'ah salah. What would this salah do? Establish your connection with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right away, you got that connection, you're getting the peace of mind. So, Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider of peace. And whatever peace we need, we will have to get it from him. There is no other person in this world that sells that peace of mind. And this is such a thing, this peace of mind is such a thing that Allah never gave any person any control over it in this world. 
totally within his control. Go to him, he will give it to you. And he is such a mu'min, which means such a provider of peace, that even those who don't believe that he is giving it, he gives them too. But a person who establishes that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remembering this attribute of Allah, remembers this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah is mu'min, then for that person really, mentally, that person is living in Jannah. He has all peace of mind. And this is the best thing you can have in this life, with Iman, that a person can have that peace of mind, where he knows that I'm always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah is always with me. So this is what our connection with Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala would do for us, will have, give us peace of mind, and will give us something that no one else in this world has it, or has any control over it. And if the world would try to take it away from you, they would never be able to do it. If the world will do their best to pull it from you and take it and use it for themselves, they won't be able to take it. People considered to be in the highest positions in the world, they cannot buy this quality. And they cannot have this peace of mind by using their powers, by spending their wealth, by doing anything that they may have in their power, in their position, in their control. They cannot get it. They can never have it. The only way is connect yourself to Al-Mu'min subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that comes in this hadith is Al-Muhaymin. What does Muhaymin mean? Muhaymin is driven from the root word Haymana. Haymana yuhayminu in Arabic language means to protect something. And our person who is always watching over things is Muhaymin. In other words, if there is a security system in this place, in this masjid here, and there are cameras all around, and a person is sitting by the monitor where he's watching every movement that is taking place in this masjid, and everything that is happening around here through all of these security cameras is sitting and watching there, you may say, this person is Al-Muhaymin at this time. This is the meaning of the word. If that person is not able to do anything about it, he cannot protect anyone. See, he is looking into the camera, a person comes into this place, he is standing, a next person enters with a gun in his hand and he goes behind this first person and he pulls the gun out to shoot at him. That person who's watching, he can't do nothing about it but to call or do something or shout or run to it. But by the time he's there to where, by the scene, the other person may be dead. So he can witness for it, he can inform us of it, but he could not do anything about saving that person. So now this is half of Al-Muhaymin. Muhaymin means a person who is watching and at the same time protecting. If a person is protecting, he cannot watch a security guard is standing out by the door and he cannot watch what's happening over here. Half of the meaning of Muhaymin is there, which means he is there to guard us but he is not able to watch. And the person who is sitting by that monitor, he is able to watch, but he is not able to guard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is watching everything, and at the same time he is protect, protecting everything. This is what Al-Muhaymin means. The one who watches everything and protects it. <laughs> and again, if we look at this universe, how many things are there that would really would 
want us to be out of this world. How many people are there who would really want us, want, they would like to see us under the ground? People get so angry that they would just like to kill another person. And that person himself or herself doesn't know what's keeping him or her from doing what he wants except to know that Al-Muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala have protected that person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really Al-Muhaymin and He is the only Muhaymin in that sense that watches everything at all times, protects each and every person and protects each and everything in the universe. Look at our own creation. Brain is very sensitive. 90% is water. You can imagine how sensitive that would be then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have put this brain into this hat. No need to go into the details of it. We all know that the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala built this hat, you banging, banging Allah uh, against a lot of things, it's still the brain is safe. The second thing that you really need to save and make sure it doesn't get affected by anything is our heart. Look at the twisted ribs that you have in front of your hearts. And I'm intentionally using the word twisted ribs. That many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may twist something and that may be the right use for it. If it's not twisted, it may not be used the right way, the way it's supposed to be used. And now we may be able to understand when the hadith says a woman is created from a rib. Not necessarily it means something bad, it may be that will be the best use for it. Otherwise, if there were two straight things in the house, there will be a lot of problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the heart in this chest. Look how He protected it by these twisted ribs. If they were in any other form, they may not have been able to protect the heart the way they do it now. So from creation, everything is there is designed in such a way that shows that there is al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala who is perfectly creating everything in such a way that everything is preserved, is protected, and he's watching over it at all times. It's not that now, okay, I put it there, I put it inside your chest, and I saved it, but now you have to keep on working on it so that it keeps on functioning. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al muhimin subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's watching over it too. And subhanAllah, when you look at this, Allah's attribute, al muhimin in His creation, it's amazing. I'll just give you a quick tour of few things of this universe that remind us, things around us, that remind us of al muhimin subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see so many birds around us, especially these small ones. They are not very colorful. If they had beautiful colors, white, red, yellowish, they would never be out there. They will be in our cages. al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them by not giving them that color. There are some who have those colors. He gave them the wings to fly away from us. Some they have the color. They don't have a good voice. You take them for some days and you don't like it. You love the other one that has that beautiful voice. But when you look at the other one, you let this one go, you look for the other one. You didn't like the color of it. Beautiful voice, but you don't like the color of it. 
he protected al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the animals the birds and you see so many animals around us by their skins and the furs that they have on their body subhanallah in winter you see these animals walking on the snow whereas for us we have to have so many different type of clothing and snow boots and still we feel cold and these animals day and night are out there they don't need no heating system they don't need no fridge or freezers to preserve their food they just walk out there bare feet they're walking out there al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them with all of this protection it comes to summer extreme heat and now we need the air conditioning these animals are still as usual they are out there and i don't think they will be sweating out there al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them with that protection there are some other animals that may not be able to take this win- winter al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the understanding the winter is coming fly out of this town and they fly miles and some of them they really fly thousands of miles from one country to another country and when the before the season changes in that country they are back to this country who gave them that understanding al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala who's providing protection for everyone the rats we don't pay no attention to them these rats you try to get them in every way possible still they skip al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the eye sight where they see during the daytime and night time at the same way they don't need a light to see anything al muhaymin you put the traps they see the traps even in the darkness of the night everything is getting its protection in different ways so now we see when some of these animals are having poisons in them this is al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them with some of those things where they can protect themselves so every creation in this universe you look at it it's created in such a way that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala provided some means of protection for it a child is born has no way of protecting himself or herself al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala have put so much love into the heart of the mother that now she's being up day and night trying to protect her child how many times you may read these type of incidents that a mother sees a child being about to be hit by a car and the incident that was practically uh, mentioned to me once that a mother sees a train coming and her child is standing on the uh, on, on the track the mother of course she cannot she has no way of taking her child away so she jumps on her child with the hope that she is going to be laying on top of him and the train will kill her but she may save the life of her child how many times people got drawn because they just try to save the child they want to get the child and they want with it they want with the child what is all of this al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala put that love that the person who has no way of protecting himself at this time someone else is there to protect that person these are all signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence there who's doing all of these things for us and everything in this universe 
has those signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many things. I just mentioned a few examples here. But everything has that indication. You look at any animal, you look at yourself, you look at things around you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always have provided us with things that protect us, protect things from other things. Always there are protections. This is al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometime, you find very amazing situations, where you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as al muhaymin protector, and the one who's watching our everything, and he's protecting everything. Amazing situations take place in the world. As Imam Dimyari rahmatullahi alayhi have written in Hayat al-Haywan, that a scholar says, and he have mentioned the name of, of that scholar too, he says, I was traveling, on my way there was a river. It wasn't very deep. I saw that a Scorpio was walking towards the river. And just in the river there at the edge, there was a turtle that was standing there. When the Scorpio got to the river, he went and he sat on the back of the turtle. He says, that scholar says that I was so amazed that look at this free ship, free ride. And the turtle started moving in certain direction, carrying the Scorpio on its back as if he was waiting for it. He says, the water wasn't too deep, I started following it, and I see that the turtle took the scorpion to the other side of the river. So I followed it. As he got to the other side, the scorpion came off and started going to a certain direction. And I'm just looking at it. I'm amazed. And that was a big scorpion. He says, as I see the Scorpio walking to a certain direction, right there, there is a tree. On the other side of the tree, there is a young man that was laying down. So I said to myself, that this Scorpio is going to bite that, that boy, that man. As I look into that direction more carefully, there is a snake that is coming down from the tree and is about to bind this young man that is slipping down. The snake is about to bind the man, and the Scorpio goes, before the snake would bind the man, the Scorpio goes and bites the snake. And the snake died right there, the Scorpio goes back to where the turtle is waiting for him. He says, I wonder, I woke that young man up. He said, wake up. Who are you? And to myself I said, you know, he has to be a great man, a very virtuous man. As he woke up, he is drunk. He is drunk. I asked him, what are you doing here? He said, you know, I don't know what was happening and I just laid down. Okay. So he says, I explained to him the whole thing that I had seen. That look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting you. How this al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting that person who have disobeyed him and he's drunk and he just laid down over there while he was drunk and he doesn't even know where he is. How al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting him. He says, when I mentioned the whole thing to him, he put his head down out of shame and he said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing so much for me, then there is no way that I will continue disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And right away he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and changed his lifestyle. This is al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Qur'an used the word muhaymin for Qur'an also. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ We have revealed this book to you that confirms the books that came before it and is a muhaymin for those books also. What does it mean? This book protects those previous books, watches over those books. If this book of Allah was not there, 
people would not have known what was really revealed in those books. Everything was changed, everything was twisted. This is the book that it really informs us of what was in those books. Now if someone comes and tells us something different, we know, no, no. This is al muhaymin for those books. This book of Allah is a muhaymin for the previous books. It protects the message of those books. So Quran is also called al muhaymin because Quran is protecting the original messages of the previous books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now our connection with al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala simply means that the person should never be happy seeing anywhere in, in anyone in hardship or difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a protector. So when you see people in hardship, simply means you don't like, you are not having that quality of being muhaymin. It reminds me, our teacher in England, once he wrote to his teacher about a situation that he was going through where people who were coming to Dharalum over there in England, they used to come and uh, do a lot of uh, mischief over there, they are breaking the windows and everything. So they caught some of those people and took them to court. And of course, as it went to the court, so the, the other group started having their claims also and blames. Finally, the school won. So he wrote a letter to his teacher that Alhamdulillah we won and uh, showing his happiness. So his teacher write, writes back to him. His teacher was, of course, uh, Shaykh al-Hadith Muhammad Zakariya rahimahullah, he writes back to him saying that thank Allah that you won, but don't be happy on the hardship that God that other people are in. Don't be happy because of their hardship. It's a very thin line there that okay, thank Allah for winning, but don't celebrate the difficulties of others. Don't be happy on the difficulties of others, because being happy on the difficulties of others is against being al muhaymin So this relationship with al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala will develop that feeling within a human being, that quality within a human being, that regardless of who that person is, this person is never pleased of seeing another person in hardship and a difficulty. You always like to see people in peace. <coughs> Even if they are your worst enemies, you may pray for their hidayah, but you don't want to see them in a difficulty. It's not okay, he was my enemy, so if his child died, it's good, or if he got in the car accident, it's good, or if he lost this, he's good. No, this is against our relationship with al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't celebrate the hardships of others. Don't be happy of the difficulties of others. This is a very important quality that we need to do. Many times we don't have it even for people close to us. People that we show our love to. When we see them in a hardship, there is some kind of happiness. Okay, he lost it, not me. This is against our relationship with al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, it's good that that person was in front of me and he got hurt. Before I did. Alhamdulillah, Allah saved me, but don't be happy that the other person got hurt. As I said, many times we fail to have this quality even for the ones that we love, even for the ones that are close to us, even for the ones that we sit with, we eat with, that we associate with. Not to talk about the ones that we don't like. It goes to extremes with the ones that we don't like. We really get so happy on the hardships of others. That is good that this happened. It's good that they had this loss. Abu Sufyan, radiyallahu anhu, 
when he was the leader of the kuffar of Quraysh. He wasn't Muslim yet. And you know what they did to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And finally with a plan to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he was forced to leave his own hometown. And how many of his people they have killed. And up to this day, how much they were trying to hurt him and his followers. He comes to Medina. What is he doing in Medina? The leader of the Kuffar. He is in Medina now. This is the very beginning days of the Hijrah. We are not talking about the seventh or the eighth year. These are the beginning years of the Hijrah. And still where they are doing their utmost, they are doing their best to do whatever they can to hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or just to wipe the deen out from the surface of the earth. And he's in Medina. What does he want? He wants to talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know what he wanted to talk to him about? He went to him. Ya Rasulullah. We have a very bad famine in Makkah. People are starving. People are starving. Animals are dying. Children are crying. You are a prophet of Allah. Pray for us. What did he say? No, it's good. You people deserved it. That wasn't the response. It's not that you people deserve it. Yes, I'll pray so that you will have even more of it. No. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only that he makes dua, he raised his hands, he made dua for those people, then he sent some message to a sahabi, that if you people, whatever extra you people have, send some to Makkah Mukarrama, so that you would help these people taking care in, in these situations of the famine that they're having at this time. And after the situation is over, still these people are in war against him. It's not that the war is ended between them. Still they are going to fight. And he doesn't even put that condition, okay, let's sign a contract. I'll make a dua for you, but you never have a war against us. No, no, no. None of these things. He makes the dua. And he sends a message also to another Sahabi. And then because the Sahabi where that person was, uh, he was the governor of his area. And they stopped the trade caravans from coming to Makkah Mukarramah from the direction of their town. So he tells them, allow them to come because we, we don't want them, these people to suffer, suffer because of the situation. Never be happy on the hardships of others. Regardless of who those people are. And as I said, it's really, is not an easy thing. We may, I mean, we need to start working with ourselves that people that are closest to us, if they are in a hardship, we don't celebrate their hardship. If they get into something, we don't be happy with it. And then go further to the extent, the worst enemies, the people who are looking forward to see you in every difficulty, in every hardship, in Whatever situation you can think that will hurt your feeling, they would like to see you in it, and they're planning for it, they plot for it, still you don't be happy of their hardships. If they get into hardship, you don't be happy of that. You still don't want to see them in hardship. You don't want to see no human being, no animal in hardship. Subhanallah, what a deen of peace. People have no clue that the peace that this deen is bringing to the world. So, this is what Al-Muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala would do, that our connection with Al-Muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala would do for us, that will always make and uh, give, give us that feeling, that quality of not being happy on other people's hardships. Number two, the other benefit we should get and drive out of our relationship with Al-Muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala is, as I said, there are two things, protection and watching over something. A person who remembers Al-Muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala will always remember, Allah is watching over me. This reminds us of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jma'in, Istahyu min Allahi haqqa al-haya. 
have the haya from Allah. Now, I don't know if I would use the word shame. What would be the Modesty. Modesty. Modesty or shame, whatever we may use for it. Shyness. Maybe some words help us just understanding that feeling that the word haya is supposed to give us. There are certain things that really cannot be translated in some languages especially, especially when that concept does not exist in that language. When the concept of haya is not there, nakedness is everywhere, and you call it being brave, the more the person is uncovered, the more brave that person is. The more the person is disrespectful, the better that person, the greater that person is. If a person can even curse at his own parents on their face, then he is very straightforward and he is upfront. Then of course that concept of hayat does not exist. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, have hayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be ashamed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahaba radwanullah alayhi wa sallam said, yes, ya Rasulullah, we do. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no. It's not what you think. It's just having clothes on your body. It simply means protect your head and whatever is around your head. Whatever is on your head, which means your eyes, your mouth, your tongue. Protect these things also from using them against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for sinning. And protect your stomach and the parts that are around the body, the, the parts of the body that are around your stomach. Protect the stomach from every haram and the private parts that are around the body from falling into any haram. And one tathkur al wal bila. And remember the death and the time when you will be under the ground and you will become in dust. So this is the real haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person who remembers al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will give him that quality of remembering that Allah is watching over me. So as, of course when he's watching and he's protecting, at the same time he sees anything else that I do. If you know that there are some cameras over here, and someone is looking, someone sitting and watching, then of course you will be careful with your actions. So, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching, and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al muhaymin He's watching, He's protecting. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be always careful that not to do anything that is against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are two great benefits we will drive from our relationship that we establish with al muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, again, muhaymin is a protector and a one who is watching over us at all times and he protects us at all time. Our connection with muhaymin subhanahu wa ta'ala should always be of that quality that we like to protect people and everything and everyone from any hardship, any difficulty. We are not going to be celebrating the hardships of others and at the same time, we remember that Allah is watching over us so we don't get into any situation that is against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين فني من هذا كوشن The question is uh, we said that the quality of al-muhaymin and that connection refers to and simply should always protect us from being happy on the hardships of others. The question is, how about the kuffar who are trying to hurt us so badly every time and cause so much harm to our women, children, elderly people? So, shouldn't we be happy on their hardships? Uh, of course, it really means that. It really means that. Don't be happy on their hardships. Wouldn't you like that person to be a Muslim rather than being in Jahannam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will smile to two type or two people. Those will be the people, both of them are in Jannah, one of them killed the other person and both of them went to Jannah. 
Because one was a kafir. In his kufr he killed this man, this Muslim. So this Muslim was shaheed and he went to Jannah. Then that kafir became Muslim and then he went to Jannah. Allah would smile to the bottom and look, you killed, you killed, one of you killed the other person and both of you are together in Jannah. It's still, even for those people, pray for the Hidayah. Why do we have to pray for this, the destruction? Yes, for those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have determined that, uh, destined that they will not have the Hidayah, and we don't know who those are. Yes, may Allah do whatever they deserve to them. But on the other hand, our responsibility, regardless, worst kuffar, worst enemies, they could have done the worst thing to us. It's still always hope for the good for them that <laughs> Allah give them the hidayah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a situation where Abu Jahl is one of his worst enemies, in fact the worst enemy of Islam, and you know the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's dua, Allahumma aiz al-Islam bi ahad al-Umarayn. Ya Allah, give respect and honor to this Islam and strengthen this deen through one of the two Umars. Umar bin al-Khattab or Amr bin Hisham, which that was Abu Jahl. So still, don't be happy on the hardships of others. It's unfortunate that they are in that situation. <coughs> May still Allah save them from doing what they're doing and guide them to the right path. This is still our hope. And this should always be our hope that the worst ones still hope for their safety in the dunya and akhirah, which means through iman. During the battle of Badr, we know that was one of the greatest victories in the history of Islam. The battle of Badr, the first battle in the history where Rasulullah did not go out with the intention of going for a war. There was no army with him. And here on the other hand, people here, they're ready with their weapons, 1,000 warriors. Anyway, we know the ending result. 70 of their leaders were killed, 70 people were captured. One of the Sahaba from Ansar says, Nighttime, I was sleeping not far from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just turning over, he's not able to sleep. He can't go to sleep. So I went to him, I said, Ya Rasulullah, such a great victory. We all are so happy. Is there something disturbing you that you're not able to sleep? And as I talked to him, I looked at his face, there are tears dripping of his eyes. I asked him, what disturbs you, Ya Rasulullah, after this great victory? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah, and look at what he said. He said, thinking about these people, the captives of war and their situation makes me worry. I don't know if they are doing okay or not. I don't know if they are in peace or not. Go and see if anyone is in hardship. Help him with that situation and then come and let me know. And the Ansar, the Sahabi from Ansar, he says, I went over there. Some of them were tied up very hard. I, lo I, I, I started losing those uh, chains or whatever they had and the ropes. And told them what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me. They, they felt very good about it. And they were very comfortable with that statement from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I went back and told him, then he was happy and he went to sleep. These are the people who came to kill him right there. These are the captives of war. But he's not able to sleep worrying about them. So that thing has to be there. That rahmatul lil alameen. That thing has to be there. Alameen is, is, includes, of course, even the kuffar. He's rahmah for everyone. <laughs> Mawla ya salli wa sallim